See Finnish man and it's Sunday morning and he has slept fine as always. But now it's time to wake. Oh, hands and not just whatever hands, but talking hands. Hello there. This is Miss Finnish from Finland and you're watching Steve Carson's channel and next what he has to say about something. Good morning. It's early morning. It's the show and it's the cat. My God. Talk about on cue. Yeah. You know, sit. It's cat. Come on. What are you doing? There you go. Thank you. I right. hey, here we go. We're 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 ready. Um I I think. Uh He's throwing me completely off my game right now. I did not expect him to come that quick. Uh, okay. Welcome. Let's start. First off, the opening. Thank you, Mr. Finglish. Uh, bad English Rex. Uh, you know, I, I uh, for for many years now, I, I can't say many years, I've been like three or so, I've known uh, bad English Rex. And he, I've always, we, we've talked back, we've done videos together. And, and so I'd ask him, say, hey, think of something. You think of an opening, please. <laughs> you know, send send me something. And so he did that. And I would like to really thank uh, thank him a lot. So thank you, Mr. Finglish. Mr. Finglish, the man that made gas masks look cool even before there was a pandemic. <laughs> so uh, that's wonderful. Uh, yesterday I had the absolute pleasure to talk with uh, Mon Monty Muse. That's the name of the channel. Monica's her name. Uh, we called and we uh, we chatted about record collecting and uh, she's doing a video that's going to be coming up. But it was a wonderful chat. Here's another person I've watched since the big, very beginning uh, when she started her channel. Uh, been an absolute joy to get to meet her as you, you get to know each other through the comments within the VC, the back and forth, and then to actually sit and have discussion is is truly incredible and it's really kind of what, what i live for so i like that. that that was a great time so thank you monica monty muse so the final thing the power of mojo i got the mojo a couple weeks ago i did that video and it was about my thoughts on the vc and everything and i said there's two channels i missed i said I really wish that Tales from the Crate and the Vinyl Douche would make videos again. It had been a very long time. Within 24 hours, they did a video. Yeah, baby. Mojo. And I got to thinking about this. This, this power. This power that I have. And, and, it, and it's just like, man, can you believe that? Why didn't I ask for ten thousand dollars and just instead I asked for two videos and that's I got it and I watched it and that was it. But if I'd asked for money, I would still have some. I could have bought a bunch of records and like, damn it. I blew my wishes. Crap. I mean it was great to see Andrew and, and uh the final douche and Sam. I mean that was was wonderful, but I could ask for money. Ah uh, hey. That's the way it goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes you just wish for the wrong thing. It was good to see both of them, though. I really, those are uh, two channels I absolutely, uh, I will not miss. So, welcome back, you two. Welcome back. I, I have some books I want to show. Uh, they're um, Flipside CT, Steve. Talked about him a lot because it's a channel that another one of my never would miss an episode. And we were discussing, uh, I think, through Messenger about some books. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm trying to bring my book collection back. Thing is, now I my bookcases are full in my house, so when I bring in a book, I got to pull something off, and that that's hard for me to do. In fact, I even got rid of some books, which is amazing. But we, um, so I brought in these books. I uh, bought a couple off Amazon. Punk Avenue. Is that neat? Uh, 
by uh, Phil Marcade, and this is the inside the New York City Underground from 72 to 82. Very stoked to get that. And in the same vein, we I brought in this one, the Downtown Pop Underground. And uh, Kimberly McLeod. Uh, and this looks at New York and the literary punks, renegade artists, DIY filmmakers, mad playwrights, rock and roll glitter queens, queens who glitterize, who revolutionized culture. That looks absolutely fascinating. Really looking forward to reading that. I was by a Books A Million store. And always when I go to these stores, I always go to what, what's on clearance. Picked up Astro Weeks, a history of um, the history of 1968. It really looks at Van Morrison, but then what else was going on? Eh, 597. How could you say no? Give give that one a shot. Nice hardback book. My goodness, that should be good. And here's one that I've always had wanted but hadn't picked up yet. Um, Sticky Fingers: The Life and Times of Jan Werner. Uh, the the editor of Rolling Stone. So this is uh, six ninety seven. Again, a not used new hardback book. Should be a great read. Now I used to buy like mag music magazines. I'd buy you know I could buy up to ten a month, and I've quit buying them. Uh, but I did see this one. Uh, picked up Talking Heads. This is one of my all time favorite groups. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen. $15 for a magazine. You could, I could have bought a record album. I was like, God, I wonder why I don't buy magazines anymore. Holy moly. You gotta pay for it. I know, prints, you know, not many people, you know, go online, they buy it there, but wow. Alright, you're here for records, though. I just took up five minutes of your time. Cat's settled in. Let's do it. This came in yesterday. And it's Stevie Ray Vaughan's Couldn't Stand the Weather. His second album came out in 1984. Uh, this is the MoFi. They made 7,000 of these. This is number 749. Man, that's kind of neat, isn't it? Uh, as I was showing it to my wife um, and explaining, the, you know, MoFi, explaining how these quality pressings, these, these 45 R RPM records, they tend to uh, go up in value. And so her one comment was, well, don't open it then. Man, she just doesn't understand. I haven't opened it yet, but I will. But really, I've been, I, I pre-ordered this a long time ago. Finally came in. Uh, again, it's a great Stevie Ray Vaughan album. And to get this pressing, I'm really excited. They now are pre-ordering Janis Joplin's. I believe it's Pearl. Uh, but uh, MoFi does have that. It's a pre-order limited to 7,000 like this. And they're also taking, uh, you can also order Blood, Sweat, and Tears first album through MoFi. Exciting stuff. Really neat to have. Then, I was out at a record store and I found a nice copy of Mothership's, uh, of the Mothership Connection. But then I found this one too. This It was only a dollar, but the album was trash. Here's the thing, I had this. Now, I did buy that. And I really only needed that. And I don't know why I really bought this when this is a beautiful cover. And now I did put my nice um, LP in there. So I, what I'll probably wind up doing is eventually it'll go out to somebody else or I'll trade it in. But hey, man, Parliament. I got, I got one of my album covers. Uh, super i always have an album cover, right? And so I've st I finally wrote them all down last night, the albums that I'm missing. Uh, so the covers that I'm missing. And yeah, we'll start looking for that. This was neat. There was a while back, um, Michael, 45 RPM, he had a uh, video and I commented on. And it dealt with MoFi. And I had um, Charles Mingus, oops, this is the wrong one, uh, um, that I had bought in the box. You know, just like that Stevie Ray Vaughan, but the flood had um, ripped, ruined the packaging. But I did save the vinyl. I mean, that's pretty expensive stuff. So I saved the vinyl. And he goes, Do you ever, have you ever tried just to call or get a hold of Mobile Fidelity to ask for the packaging? Uh, no, I hadn't thought about that. 
And so after some back and forth, having to show that I did have this, damn it, Mobile Fidelity sent me in the box, sent me in the sleeves for all. Um, is that not neat? Now, if I did not know my number, there is no number. This, this was limited to 6,000, but I don't have that on there. But I got all that. Now, it's blank, right? It's blank. You saw the other one, it was like a magic marker. I could write the number one. I could write the number one, and I'll have the very first album. That is awesome. Now, it was very nice of Mobile Fidelity to do that. Excuse me, all my records just absolutely fell down. Damn it. Oh, we are having a mess here. Okay. And one other thing I wanted to show that just went way over here. Come here. Ah. I never got to show this. I lost the cover, but this was this is neat. Uh, and for the collectors, you'll know that. This is Simon and Garfunkel's uh, bookends. No big deal. This is mono. And this mono is hard to find. And I had recently purchased that before the flood. and obviously lost the color. But this is a very neat collectible to find uh, that in the mono version. So neat you know obviously i'm not going to get a find a mono cover of that i'm pretty sure but a regular cover will do just fine and that should be fairly easy to go uh, so that, that was that was nice to see okay and all my records are totally messed up now i do put these in an order to talk but here i think i can fix that so the first one uh, Captain Spaulding, he had this auction that he went on to um, raise money for um, kids at Christmas time. And so I participated and I bought three of them. And one of them that I bid, and this became a little bidding war, the Dead Boys. There you go. I, I got my official Dead Boys t-shirt. I had a Dead Boys album, but that, you know, wiped out. But I do have the vinyl. But this is the very first album, um, 1977, the Dead Boys. Uh, these they, they, they came out of Cleveland. This was a punk group that embraced the whole punk scene. And we're talking the rowdiness and the violence. They started in 76. They broke up in 79. Basically, they broke up because they did two albums. And the record company said, you know, you guys need to maybe lighten up a little bit. Make a little more poppy songs. <laughs> mm, probably not what they wanted to do. Uh, when they started, uh, their, their first group that they had formed... Uh, their lead singer, uh, Stiv Batar, was called Frankenstein. Then they changed their name to um, Rocket from the Tomb. Not the Crip. Rocket from the Tomb was the name of their next group. And finally, the third name was Dead Boys. So, uh, you know, they kind of had a theme going on there, did they? Uh, so you can just kind of tell what the music. And so they're in Cleveland. You know, they're just the punk band to be there in Cleveland. And Joey Ramone, can, you know, convinces them, you guys got to come to New York. What, what's going to happen in New York? That should be a pretty good place for these boys, you know. It's a nice, calm area. So it didn't help them. But so they went to New York. Uh, they, they put out this absolutely classic punk album. It has the, the, the hit, the huge hit. For punk fans of 70s music, Sonic Reducer is on here. And that thing was major. Uh, it, really good stuff. It's fast. It's furious. It is a punk assault. The the lead singer, uh, Stiv um, Bator, he sounds like he smokes five packs of cigarettes a day. Kazuntite. Cat does have a cold. He's, he's a little congested. Um, we need to get him something there. But real punk class. It really happy to have it and I've now been back no you're gonna sneeze in my face man I know I know not feeling great there we go okay next one and this has been showing I've had for a little while it just takes me a while to show things we have Donald Bird's chant and this is um, one of the um, tone poets that came out this this is a really really nice jazz album it was done in 61, but wasn't released until 79. It's one of these, um, you know, they, you know, they found Blue Note had 
over a hundred different albums they had recorded that had never been released and they found these in the late 70s and they began putting them out you know it's like a treasure trove of music and this was one of them uh and, and this is oh god bless it oh, can't spit on me man jeez okay all right um kind of just throws you off and you can't spits in your face <laughs> yeah uh, yeah you're not doing well here okay uh so the thing is Don, donald bird i mean this is one intelligent player he he now uh, he i eventually got a doctorate degree and he taught music and everything he was really i mean great hard bop person really could play hard bop but this was the difference with him he added a lot of melody to it and so when you listen to him yeah, there's a hard bop, the fast horn playing going on, but there is melody happening. And that's what makes these Donald Byrd albums, especially, you know, late 50s, 60s, so good. You know, in the 70s, he got more into funk and 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 uh, went different directions. God, can't you cover your mouth? Why do you have to sneeze at me, man? Uh, but... It, it's it's really nice. He does. He has a couple originals on here. Sophisticated ladies, one of the originals, and that's all. And then he takes some of the other standards and does that. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Here it crunch. Beautiful album. Beautiful sounding. For those of you, you know, if if you want just some really great jazz to listen to, this one's fast it's upbeat it is nice hard bop so it really moves along but it is done in such a way that there's a nice melody to it really neat stuff super enjoyable listen had that for a while it just takes me a while to get to it How about a little African, of course. Uh, oh, that's it? Okay. Hamad Kalab, Kalkaba, Hamad Kalkaba is what we're going to call this man. Uh, came out of Cameroon, you know, uh, 70s. And, <laughs> God, you almost wrapped me, baby. Okay. He, he put out three singles, six sides. They're all on here. All three singles, all three six sides. Oh, wow. You got a whole album for that. Well, the singles obviously are a little bit longer than a normal single, uh, but it's just the music he made and the impact that he had. He was a disciple of Fela Kuti, so the music has more of that big beat feel to it. The lyrics are a call and response, similar to what you would have from a Fela Kuti. Uh, songs are very political, um, deals with something like the sugar shortage, which was a big deal. There was a sugar shortage. Uh, about a move into this, getting married, and when you're living in the country, moving to the city, and about the wife suddenly wanting you, wanting more, because now we're in the city, and dealt with other politics. Again, there's only six, six songs on here, but... Um, there, there's the size of his band, so you can see it's pretty big. So he, he, he released these singles, and you know, it's part of the nice book in there. You can see what it looks like, um, and it was all very political. Well, then he decides, you know, he and he played till I think '77, and then he got out of music. So he writes all these political songs, gets out of music, and joins the military. Serious. He joined the military then, which was generally part of the problem. But he did very well in the military, and he still is around, and he's head of the African Athletics uh, or Organization. Now, the, what's it called? The the um, Confederation of Af African Athletics um, or Organization. That's what he's the head of. So they have a nice interview with him talking about the music. I'll play a sample. It's it's really good sounding. I mean, I like his sound on there. Uh, I'd be interesting to see what else he would have done. But, you know, they, um, they did it. He went out. They uh, played in clubs and stuff. And 
this guy out of the music business. So from Analog Africa here, um, Hamad Kalak Kalkaba and the Golden Sounds is the name of the album. Nice artwork. <laughs> Then we go into, this was some uh, SCLT, this came from Andre. Uh, Mrs. Fish 7 sent me this, Lloyd and the Commotions Mainstream. And this is the third album by Lloyd and the Commotions. They were a lot bigger. Yeah, it has the lyric sheet, really nice in inner sleeve. This, this thing's just in beautiful condition, really amazing stuff. And uh, the Lloyd and the Commotions was around from 84 to 88. The group broke up, but uh, Lloyd Cole went on and um, for a solo career and stills out there and has a solo career. That looks kind of neat, doesn't it? Man, it fits. Do I look better that way? Hmm. I surprised the wife this morning with that. Uh, this this went to number nine in the UK. In the US, it didn't do well. Now, his previous albums did better in the US, but this one just didn't have it. And, and again, they, they broke up after this. There's nice chiming guitars in there. There's synth in there. It has an 80s production, but yet more of an independent feel. You know, it's not like one of the electronic bands of the 80s. Uh, some songs almost have like a Springsteen... Um, God, kind of like a, a Springsteen. I'm trying to think of the, how I want to say this. Uh, it's just set up similar to how Bruce Springsteen would write in that, but yet a U2 type production going on in the background. Uh, enjoyable listen. Uh, you know, it's a group I would never have bought or heard of or thought about, um, and to get this was just a lot of fun. So, uh, Mrs. Fish, thank you so much for that. Really enjoyed it. This album. This came out in 2017, and I don't know why I picked it up. Quite honestly, I'm, I'm not. Oh, there was on. There was a heck of a huge sale. They were getting rid of a bunch of stuff, and thought, "Hey, I'm going to do this." This is online. New West, maybe. I'm not sure who it was. Name of groups Midland. Came out in 2017. They're out of uh, Texas. And it's country. You may not notice that. And I saw them suits. Look at them nudie suits, man. How could you say no to that? I mean, wow. That is something. They had a number one hit on here called Drinking Problem. Um, how's it go? They say, um, they, it says, you say I have a drinking problem, but I got no problem drinking. That's how the lyric, the chorus goes, which is pretty funny, actually. Um, they really wanted to get back by, you know, 2017. You know, a lot of country is really polished. You know, you think of what Taylor Swift had been doing. Though she was crossing over Casey Musgrave and everything. There was a lot of pop to it. They wanted to bring back old school country, 70s, 80s. When I think old school, that's not old school to me. But I guess I'm much older. But that's what they wanted to bring in. And so... It was done with this. And so they uh, made this album to kind of give that feel. Good songwriting. They they switched um, genres of country, so we say. You know, one has more of a, a Tex-Mex uh, beat with a mariachi band. I'm going to play you a sample of that one. Uh, and, and, you know, some songs are there's your basic tear in your beer songs. There's others that are made perfectly for line dancing. Really nice listen. You know, is it the greatest album that I have in my collection? It's not. But you have to buy some country once in a while to see what was going on out there. And I enjoyed the listen on this one. So if you have, if you like country, this is very listenable. 
and it's it's really just nice. Again, they have just more of that old school feel to them. So the name of the group was Midland. It's called On the Rocks is the name of the album, On the Rocks. By the way, the video has been banned, and once again, Iran, Syria, North Korea, and um, Cuba. Music samples. It's the samples I put out. They don't want them. I don't know why. I think it's the African stuff. They always ban them. A final one, I picked up a couple Spoon albums. I used to have a lot of Spoon in CD, and I, you know, they, 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 they disappeared, And but I love Spoon. I love uh, that group. This is their greatest hits. You know, but if I'm going to have Spoon, I might as well get their hits because I don't want to bring in all their albums. And then they they want my soul when this one came out in 2014. John, the digital gramophone, did a really nice um, video on Spoon. That's one of his favorite groups, and it's worth looking out. But, you know, you did pick this. This is great. They're polished. It's a nice polished group. Great indie rock going on. Um really enjoyable if you haven't heard spoon just pull them up you can pull them, you can listen to them on any of the um uh different streaming services well worth taking a listen to they write very smart intelligent songs well put together sounds great uh, you really you won't go wrong there's stuff in the arts i think is the best um that there's a song, there's a movie called Stranger Than Fiction. Spoon was a big part of the soundtrack to that movie, so just need, need to have those in the collection. Just not in And there we have it. That's this week's um, stuff. So, um, hey, fantastic. Did my vinyl tag. If you haven't checked that out, give that a shot. Listen to what I blab about for a very long time, of course. Um, yeah, that's it. Heading to Cleveland this week. Um, Cleveland, rock on. And that's it. That's all I got. That's all I have for you this week. So thank you. Thank you again for coming in. A lot of new people have subbed my channels. Uh, again, I thank you for that. Uh, vinyl tags, watch them out there. There's a lot of new channels that put out vinyl tags. If you haven't, you're new, you want to do it, please do it. Watch one. Get the questions. Watch mine if you haven't. And make, make, make your video. Easiest way to do it. Everyone, have a great week. Cat says goodbye. I now got to go wash my face because it's full of cat spit.